Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Selling Greenville, your favorite podcast about the Greenville real estate market. As always, I'm your host, Stan McCune, and if you need to reach me for any reason, my contact information is in the show notes like it always is. You can call me, text me, email me at any time with the information that you find in there. And as always, I always ask, if you love this podcast, please go ahead and give us a rating. Make sure you're subscribed to it. Uh, You don't need to unsubscribe and then resubscribe. I don't ask for my listeners to do any of that. Just make sure you're subscribed to it that you don't miss any future episodes. Give us a rating. Leave us a review if you can. That's great. I love to see those ratings and those reviews whenever you guys leave them. Really appreciate it. Really gives me confidence to keep this podcast going. And we are now at episode number 25. I'm recording this on August the 10th. I will probably release it a little bit later in this week. Um, But I'm really excited. Episode 25. We have done an episode every week for 25 weeks now. That's almost half a year. And I'm really excited about that. This is some of the stuff that uh, the coronavirus, that COVID-19, has opened the door for, right? Because I, I didn't used to spend as much time in my home office. And quite frankly, I've had more time this year than normal because there is just less real estate activity, even though it's still busy. It's not as busy as last year, obviously, because there are fewer sellers, and that's causing there to be fewer buyers as well. Um, And it's given me a little bit of extra time to work on this podcast, which I probably couldn't have done in previous years. And I'm really happy about that. I'm really happy with how this has gone. But we need to talk a little bit more about the market, the real estate market, what is going on. It's kind of weird. It's kind of crazy. For those of you that are uh, tracking stocks and and that, uh, that track things like that, There's a lot going on in the stock market as well. Um, Obviously, I'm no financial planner, no financial advisor, but I'm seeing the price of gold and silver go up. I'm seeing mortgage interest rates and other interest rates go down. There's a lot going on that is concerning a lot of people. I'm not going to get into all of that, um, but just know that uh, there's a lot of uncertainty right now. And people are concerned, and that is having a ripple effect in the real estate market. Um, But I don't exactly know where that's going to go. All that I can tell you right now is what I see happening in real estate and where I see real estate probably going uh, down in the future into maybe early or the middle of next year. And that's what I want to talk about today. So for starters, I've already alluded to this, but this is literally the weirdest real estate market ever. Now, you'll remember earlier this year, we had interest rates plummet uh, because the Fed, you know, the Federal Reserve, they dropped uh, interest rates on their end. When that happens, that usually means mortgage interest rates drop as well. But there was a weird phenomenon that happened at that time, and that's that banks couldn't meet uh, the demand for refinances and for new mortgages when those interest rates dropped. So what ended up happening is that banks actually increased their rates a little bit. The rates actually kind of went up uh, in a lot of instances because the banks couldn't handle the, the number of applications that they were getting. And it's simple economics. When demand outpaces supply, prices go up. So even though all, by any other standard, interest rates should have gone down, they actually went up. Well, it seems that banks have figured out, you know, maybe improve their staffing or improve their processes or whatever the case may be, and interest rates have gone down, and they are unbelievably low. We are seeing 15-year mortgages down in the low twos, like nearly in the high ones. We have seen 30-year uh, loans going, even on refinances, going below 3% into the mid to high twos. I mean, I never thought that this would happen. Honestly, I never wanted this to happen. This is almost scary. I don't really know what to make of this exactly, but uh, it's great if you are refinancing or or getting a mortgage on a new property. So it's in one sense, it's never been a better time to buy, except from the standpoint that that so fewer people are selling their homes right now. The inventory levels are just insane. They're hovering around 
uh, two to three months of inventory, which is an unbelievably insane seller's market. Um, and so it's it's weird because it's been like the best time to sell and also one of the best times to buy at the same time, but nobody can do either, right? Because people that are selling, a, a lot of them have dropped out of the market for one reason or another. They're concerned about the economy. Uh, they want to hold off. Um, they don't, you know, they don't want to move right now, whatever the case may be. And those that are looking to buy, they don't have hardly anything to look at. There is so little inventory. So uh, it is unbelievably weird. I've never seen anything like this where buyers and sellers are in such a great position to do that, to buy or to sell, but that so few buyers and sellers are out there because of the meta issues going on with COVID. Perhaps the election year is playing into that a little bit. Um, uncertainty about the economy, all these different things, it's causing people to uh, to do things that they normally wouldn't when it comes to this market, and it's really causing a crazy ripple effect. Now, what does that mean, practically speaking, and, and what have I seen uh, practically how this should impact you as a potential real estate player, as someone who might be buying or selling a home in the near future. All right, let me let me talk to my sellers right now, okay? And this is a conversation that I have with uh, people that are listing their home with me anyway. But um, for those of you that are thinking about selling, let me put this bug in your ear, okay? Homes that are sitting on the market, that have sat on the market for a while, are languishing. It's a very interesting thing, and I think this has to do with the fact that so Many buyers have dropped out of the market. Now, there still appears to be well uh, many more buyers than there are sellers, but a lot of buyers have dropped out of the market. There's just fewer people doing real estate transactions right now. And so what's happening is that the buyers are all jumping on the new listings. And when the new listings come up, everyone's freaking out. And they're like, okay, I got to get that home. I got to get that home. Um, well, what happens if that doesn't happen pretty soon in the life cycle, life cycle of a listing, particularly if it's a, an inexpensive listing? And so we're talking about like 250 and below. Now, for, now, what I've found is for listings that are more expensive, 250 and above, um, those are tending to take a little bit longer. Again, because there are probably fewer buyers in that price point right now than there normally are. Uh, people you know, that are trying to sell those homes are having to be a little bit more patient in some ways. It's not quite the feeding frenzy right on the front end that it has been in the past or that we've been used to the past few years. But particularly if you're selling a home below 250, um, you know, and if you start getting into the low 200s, the high 100s particularly, I mean, that home really needs to sell fairly quickly. If it languishes on the market, if it lingers for several weeks, for like a month, uh, for two months, which normally is not that big of a deal, right? The average house in, in Greenville County tends to sell in like 50 or so days. And by sell, I mean go under contract in like 50 or so days. But right now, that's a really bad benchmark to look at. If your home has been on the market for 50 or so days, um, it's probably going to be on the market for a while longer. And what we're seeing is that people aren't looking at the homes that uh, have been on the market for a while for whatever reason. They, they have skepticism about those homes. They're worried. You know, they're like, well, what? This home shouldn't have been on the market for this long. What's wrong with it? Um, and so if you overprice your home, then what that means is that your home is not going to get that, that uh, benefit from the early listings. People aren't going to be excited about it from the get-go. And then it's going to be on the market for a while. And then when you do finally start to drop your price to where it needs to be, you're going to find that you're not going to get the same amount of activity that you did if you had just started by listing it at that price point. So you need to list it for the correct price. Obviously, you don't want to underprice it either. I see so often in this market, and we've talked about this before, so I apologize if you've heard this again but um, or if you're hearing this again from me. But um, so often I see these situations where sellers try to drum up bidding wars. And in this market, because our prices are so cheap, it just doesn't work. The, the price 
that works in other markets where real estate is a lot more expensive, but here in this market and where people are looking for bargains and whatnot, it just it doesn't typically work. It's best you have to find what the home is worth and price it accordingly. Not too high, not too low, but particularly not too high. Um, if you price it too low, you'll sell it. You just won't sell it for as much as you probably could have. If you price it too high, you're just not going to sell it. Um, and you're going to find yourself in a, in a bad situation there. Here's another piece of advice for my buyers. All right, so that was for my sellers. Here's for my buyers. Um, if you can make this work financially, now is the time to find your quote-unquote forever home. This is something that we we deal with. So we, we've got first-time home buyers. They're typically buying starter homes. Those first-time home buyers, after a few years, they typically look to purchase an intermediate home. And then a, a few years after that, they find their forever home, right? This is the this is what we call and what a lot of people refer to when they're talking about the American dream. It is this process of of being able to to end up in your forever home. The people that are doing really, really well right now are the people that are able to make the leap from the starter home directly into their forever home. And there are two reasons for that. One is that it seems like disproportionately buyers on the top end, and uh, I'm using top end pretty generically, but let's just say uh, 300000 and above. That is squarely the top end of the market, the median uh, home sale in Greenville County or in the in the upstate is around 230. Um, so once we get into 300 and above, that's starting to be by Greenville County standards a very nice home. And honestly, if you go to the to the other counties, to Spartanburg, to Oconee, Anderson, I mean, you're talking about a really real. You could get like a mansion in Anderson for for 300 thousand um, dollars. But there are a lot more buyers at that price point that have dropped out than the buyers in the low 200s that have dropped out. So you have much less competition to deal with for a home that is, say, $350,000 than you would have in the past. And if you're looking to make an intermediary uh, type of uh, home purchase, and you're maybe going from a home that you bought a few years ago for like, um, 150,000, and now you're looking to jump up to a home that's like 225,000 or 230,000, or whatever the case may be. You're gonna find that there is still quite a bit of competition that you're dealing with. Tons of bidding wars, which we'll get to in a second, but tons of competition at that price point. Um, if you can make the leap to that forever home, to that home. And and obviously that might look different to different people, but that you know maybe that three hundred twenty five, three hundred fifty, three hundred seventy five thousand dollar home, if you can find a way to make the numbers work, you will find that there is much less competition. You can probably get the seller to to come down on the price in certain situations. Uh, you will you will find that you're much less likely to get into bidding wars. It is a much more uh, enjoyable and 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 successful route to go in that way. And there's another big benefit as well, right? Right now, interest rates we just talked about, they're in like the twos, okay? Um, not that long ago, they were in the sixes and the fives. And, um, you know, just basically like uh, a year ago, they were in the fours for a lot of people. So interest rates are going to go up. Listen, they are going to go up, and probably in a few years, they will be double what they are now. It's going to be a big gut punch to a lot of people that right now they buy, you know, that intermediate home for 200 something thousand at a, you know, 2.75% interest rate. And then when they're ready to, to make the next jump into their forever home in a few years, A, the, that forever home will have appreciated. So it, it, instead of it being a $325,000 home, now it's a $380,000 home. But also your interest rate, your mortgage interest rate, it's likely it's going to be like 5% or something like that. Like rates are going to go up. That is going to happen at some point. And that's going to be a major gut punch to go from 
oh man, I've got such a sweet deal on this house and I don't want to give this house up. Um, and I, I don't want to, you know, surrender this mortgage, but I've got to sell this house in order to, to make the next move. How am I going to do this? Um, if you can cut out that intermediate home, and I not, know not everyone can, but if you can do that, you will set yourself up uh, for the future in a really, really good way. You will have a mortgage interest rate that 15 years from now, people will be astonished by. People will be like, wait, what's your interest rate? Uh, how did you possibly pull that off? And you'll just be laughing and it's like, well, I made a good financial decision back in 2020. Um, so that's some advice that I'm giving to, to my buyers. Um, for those that are investors, obviously it's a great time to purchase buy and hold properties for the same reason. Interest rates are really low. Now they're not as low for investment properties as they are for owner-occupied properties, of course. But um, but it's still a really great time to buy rental properties, uh, buy and hold properties of, of any kind. Um, not a great time to buy commercial. There's a lot of uncertainty with commercial. I'm not a commercial realtor, so that's not my area of expertise. But from talking to people, there's a lot of uncertainty in that market right now. So I'm, I'm very leery of that market. But in terms of rental properties, um, really, we're running into the same thing we do with, with any property. Uh, purchases is that there's not a lot of inventory out there, but if you can find the right option, get it under contract, get that low interest rate, you're set up for the future in a very, very good way. Um, it, you know, as far as like flipping properties go, because I get this question a lot, I've got a lot of clients that flip properties, I flip properties myself from time to time. Um, that's a challenging market. There is a particularly the past like three to four weeks, the opportunities on uh, properties that could potentially be flipped has gone down way, way far. Uh, there is just not hardly anything out there to flip. And so if you're trying to flip, you definitely have to be creative right now. Um, this is just, it's just challenging in a lot of ways right now for the flippers. Um, I'm actually... Um, seriously considering getting into direct marketing, trying to market directly to potential sellers myself, uh, because we just don't have enough supply to meet the demand for those that are wanting to, to do that type of thing, for those that are wanting to rehab houses. Uh, so I'll keep you guys more in the loop on that, um, but that is something to keep in mind uh, if you're an investor buyer. Now, again, for, for buyers, I, I caution sellers to be too bullish on this, but for buyers, bidding wars are just the way it is right now, particularly, again, if you're in that sweet spot, that below 250 price point, bidding wars are just the norm right now, and I don't see that changing unless the economy shifts, right? Unless we see a major downturn in the economy thus far, the economy uh, seems like it's been pretty resilient. It's been mostly low-wage uh, earners that people in retail and brick and mortar that have been hit the hardest by COVID-19, and I hate that for them. Um, but generally, that uh, that means that the economy is is still doing okay. Um, it could do a lot better, obviously, but unless it really starts to get to the point where those um, you know, middle level management type of people are starting to get laid off or where, you know, uh, companies that aren't brick and mortar type of establishments are really starting to do mass layoffs. I don't see a major economic shift happening, just my personal opinion. So, uh, so for bidding wars, you kind of have to just get used to that and you kind of have to plan accordingly. And what I tell a lot of my clients, listen, you need to just ignore the list price in a lot of situations. Um, the list price helps you to kind of get a sense of what the seller is thinking. But I mean, I just saw a house just, I think it was just today, just today or maybe it was yesterday. Um, it was a duplex that the price dropped from $400,000, get this to $275,000. So that's an instance of a seller that was just, they found an agent that was that agent was probably like, oh yeah, I'll definitely list this this for four hundred thousand dollars and see what happens. Um, 
And obviously, who on earth, unless unless this is the world's nicest duplex, uh, at least for this area, nobody's going to buy that for $400,000. I'm sorry. There isn't a market for that uh, in Greenville County. Um, and uh, you just, in, in a situation like that, like obviously the, that was an anomaly. But most people, they, they list a property for roundabout what they think it's worth. But you as a buyer, you need to be thinking about what is this property worth to me? And don't get fixated on the list price, right? Don't get, you know, if if it's listed for what seems like a great deal, probably there's going to be a lot of other people bidding on that property. There's going to be a lot of offers on that property. And you need to be thinking in from the standpoint of what is this property worth to me? It might be listed for two hundred thousand, but but what if that property came on the market for two thirty? Would you have been interested in it at that point? Well, if the answer is yes, then you might want to offer two thirty, and uh, in that case, I recommend to my clients to offer escalating offers that allow them to not lead with the two thirty, but allows them to go up to two thirty if the seller can provide proof of a competing offer that was close to that price point. That's something that we've talked about in the past, but there are some tricks that you can do with some of that. Um, on the flip side, if a property is listed for too high, then yeah, you can offer uh, what it's worth to you that's lower than the list price. Just understand right now that a lot of sellers are a little bit, I don't wanna say delusional, but like I said, that one that listed that duplex for $400,000, you know, they weren't being serious about selling it for $400,000. They just wanted to see what the market said. Obviously, the market said, heck no. And now they just dropped it by $125,000. Um, but understand that when a house gets first listed, if you want to come in there with an offer that's 10% below what it's listed as, you're not going to get that offer accepted. Like, yeah, I'll write it for you. I'll, I'll, I'll represent my buyer clients however it best serves them. Um, but the likelihood, unless your offer is just sweet cash, you know, basically no contingencies, very quick closing, the likelihood that that offer will be accepted well below what it was just listed at, it's not very likely. Now, if the home's been on the market for a while, then you have more of a likelihood that the seller will consider a lower offer. But right now, it is a seller's market. Sellers are testing the waters with how high can I go. Um, and the result is that they want to kind of let a listing sit for a little bit before they're willing to entertain those lowball offers. But the, the bottom line is when you see the list, the list price, that's not necessarily the best. The best offer that the seller is getting isn't, not, isn't necessarily that list price. It might be well above that list price, and there is no way to know. A good agent almost always will never reveal to other uh, potential buyers what type of offers they've gotten. They might give little hints, but um, you're as an as a realtor, you're not supposed to reveal a whole lot of information without the seller's approval. And most sellers, you know, don't want that information to be revealed, obviously, and so. That's uh, we're a little bit in the dark when there's multiple offers on what those offers look like. You need to, to figure out what offer you are happy with. And, and, I, and again, I say, think about at what price you would be like, what you know, top price you would be like, you know what? Okay, I'm still, I'm still happy about this. This is still a good deal for me. That is the price you need to be thinking about in your mind. It might be 200,000, it might be 215,000, 230, 240, whatever the case may be, but that's where you need to, to plant your flag. And make sure that uh, you don't have buyer's remorse, right? Don't, don't go crazy and then in the end be like, man, I overspent for that. Um, I don't, I very rarely have that happen with my clients because I talk them through all the different options, and I and I try to structure the contract in such a way that they get the best price possible. Um, but I hear a lot of stories of buyers that have buyer's remorse because they just they just led with with too much money, 
Um, and they afterwards think, you know what, I probably didn't have to do that. Um, that's something to keep in mind as well. Um, less with regard to purchasing or selling or whatever real estate. Um, and obviously this doesn't help me at all when typically when my clients, uh, do this or, uh, when people I know do this. Um, but you might consider refinancing right now, right? Obviously, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. Um, I have done three refinances this year. Well, I'm actually in the process of my third. Um, hopefully that closing will be at the end of this, uh, this week. Um, but on my properties, uh, I'm working on my third refinance. This is, listen, a great time to refinance. It's taken a while though, because banks are obviously not prioritizing the refinances. They're prioritizing the new home purchases that have more of a deadline. But refinancing can get you a lower interest rate. Um, if you want to do a cash out refinance, let's say you have a lot of equity in your home. Let's say that um, you know your home is worth three hundred thousand, but you only owe one hundred fifty thousand dollars on the house. You can do what's called a cash out refinance. Take that equity, so you you have one hundred fifty thousand dollars of equity in the home. You can probably get. 100,000 or more of that, basically the bank to write you a check at closing. Uh, and you're basically re uh, getting a new mortgage on the total value, which is now $300,000, maybe 80% of that value. Um, and now you're in a situation where the bank is paying you. So it's as if you're purchasing the home at 300,000 and getting you know, a loan with a 20% down payment. That's the way it is in the eyes of the bank. But the bank is literally writing you a check and then you can go take that money and hopefully use it wisely. Maybe use that money to do some house updates that you've been neglecting for a while. Um, and you will be starting over in terms of your mortgage. Uh, but in some cases, I had a, I did a cash out refinance recently that because the the interest rates are so low, my mortgage didn't go up that much which is crazy. It's crazy to think about, right? I, I got a lot of money at closing and uh, my monthly mortgage did not go up very much because of the way rates are right now. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's a great market to do a refinance. You can obviously also do a home equity line of credit. That's kind of a different way of skinning that cat. You keep your mortgage that you already have. So you know, maybe you, you already have a great rate and you're not really able to refinance down to a better rate. Um, but you might have enough equity that you can get a home equity line of credit. It's basically like having a credit card against your home. But you can take that money out at any time for any reason and you can pay it back off at any time for any reason. Um, and that just stays there and you can use it at any time. I've used, I've done both of these at different times for various reasons, and they've both been very helpful, very effective for me uh, for different things. Now, looking forward to the future, what's going to happen in the future um, as far as uh, as as far as the market is concerned? Um, well, I don't know for sure, but when COVID ends. And when the election season is over, and by the way, it is going to be a season. There is not going to be an election night this year. Um, everyone should be prepared for that. There's going to be mail-in voting. It's going to take weeks to tally up. There's going to be all kinds of controversy. Just get yourself ready for that. Uh, we don't know how that's going to impact the markets. But regardless, after all of this is in the rearview mirror, I think that the market is going to erupt in some way. I'm not exactly sure how, um, but if I had to guess, I would guess it's going to erupt in the way that a bunch of people are going to enter the market all at the same time. Most likely, people that are wanting to sell and to buy. So we're going to have a glut of new homes come on the market all at the same time, and simultaneously, some of those people will also be buyers. Um, I think you know, when that happens, it'll probably flip a little bit more to a buyer's market. But I don't know. The, it, it, I, the way I see it, it seems like supply is getting, um, real in, in the real estate market, is getting pent up. You know, all these people that would normally be selling right now, they're not. I have to think that at some point, they're all going to decide 
that it's time to sell. And, and that's probably going to happen sometime next year. Um, maybe at some point they uh, have a safe vaccine that people are taking for COVID and we get that under control. I would think at that point, I, I just don't see the market staying the way it is right now. I think it's going to shift at some point, but it seems like it's going to take uh, you know, for us to get past all this COVID nonsense for that to happen. And that seems like it's not going to be probably until, what, maybe spring of next year. I think the current conditions that we have uh, are most likely to continue for a while. Because even, you know, the most optimistic thoughts that are out there about a COVID vaccine or that there could be one by the end of this year. But the thing is that they're rushing it. Um, and I- I'm no expert Uh, on this by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, But I've done enough research that it seems like they're, they're kind of rushing through the clinical trials and whatnot. Normally, it would take longer than than just a few months for them to get um, a a brand new vaccine to market. And what's going to happen is the there's going to be a lot of early adapters to the vaccination that are going to be kind of almost like an extension of the clinical trial. And a lot of people won't be willing to, to take that first vaccine. Um, even people that are normally vaccine positive. And so um, that it's going to take a while before people are really comfortable with taking a, a possible COVID vaccine. It's probably going to continue to take a while before we really get this under control. Um, the, probably the best case scenario is if we get this herd immunity thing, which we don't know if that really happens with COVID or not, but that would be the best case scenario. Maybe that could happen by the end of the year. But I'm tentatively planning for the market to really shift in the spring because I think that that is when uh, we'll have the election nonsense over with. Hopefully, we'll have COVID under a little bit more under control. Hopefully, the economy will have rebounded by then. And then spring is normally the time here in Greenville. You get to the months of April, May, June. That's when the real estate market usually really heats up around here. And I think it is going to be nuts in 2021. Um, and uh, probably it's going to shift a little bit more in the buyer's direction at that time. But that's going to be to uh, to the downfall, so to speak, in some ways, to sellers. Right now, it's a great market for a lot of sellers, unless you're selling homes that are, that are more expensive. Um, so that's a lot to consider. That's just conjecture. I don't know for a fact that that's what's going to happen, but that's my best guess. Um, regardless... That is what we're seeing, or that is at least what I'm seeing in the market right now. It is a weird and wild market, Um, but uh, I'm just thankful for the clients that I have, for the business that I've had this year. It's going to be down for pretty much everyone, uh, but that's okay. You know what? We are able to weather the storm, and hopefully uh, everyone is being patient as they wait for the right home to come on the market, um, and as they wait for things to, to kind of settle down a little bit. Uh, But if you need help with anything in real estate or you know someone that does, please reach out to me. Again, my contact information is in the show notes. And until next time, stay safe and have a little fun with the last week or two of the summer.